Okay, I'm back. We left here uh, with uh, Czar, um, excuse me, Kaiser Wilhelm II. Again, I told you he is the uh, cousin of uh, uh, Czar Nicholas II. So let's move on from here over to Europe overall. I'm focusing a little bit. I got the thing out in England, but this is sort of Europe overall. First of all, uh, during the early part of this chapter, we talk about this principle of intervention where the great powers could send armies to intervene in other countries to restore order. And by restoring order, we mean a, a monarch and absolute uh, rule. Uh, Britain rejects this for a couple of reasons. A, they've got a parliamentary uh, a constitutional monarchy where the king is limited by the parliament. And also, they've got a great overseas empire. They're one of the largest empires in the world at the time. Uh, and they actually don't want anyone trying to get in their way, and they see that might possibly happen. There are overall, however, in Europe, some great new scientific discoveries. We've got uh, um, examples of pasteurization uh, for milk and other things to uh, sanitize food. We've got sanitation advancements. We've got uh, uh, vaccinations, a lot of things going on here. Improvements in industry that lead to that second industrial revolution and new and improved transportation, all kinds of radical new things here. And of course, we talked about in the, the first video, modernism, those artists and writers rebelling against against those uh, you know, traditional styles, trying to show life a little bit more as it actually is, as opposed to that sort of romanticism and uh, you know, ignoring the past. Uh, new means of transportation here, the steamboat, a uh, great version of that invented by Robert Fulton. Uh, we also got trains, as you can see here, you can see why uh, uh, they're built along the same carriage tracks as the old Roman chariots, and almost like open larger carriages at first. And then of course there is the automobile, and you can see here clearly why they might have called it a horseless carriage. We always sort of name some new technology by the old technology, horseless carriage before it becomes the automobile. Let's move now, however, over to the new world. Okay, in the United States, what's going on there? Great things, uh, civil war. Okay, well, not so great. You'll learn more about that in U.S. history uh, in your junior year. This is from 1861, of course, from 1865, starting with 1861 when South Carolina secedes, that's withdraws from the Union, uh, and the first fighting, of course, starts uh, at the bombing at Fort Sumter, also in South Carolina. Now, during the Civil War, we have Clara Barton, uh, who uh, is a teacher who serves as a nurse. She's a horrified by the unsanitary conditions and the terrible care that it's, uh, the men are receiving down there. She helps found the American Red Cross, and she helps, again, along with Florence Nightingale from over in uh, the Crimean War, the British nurse, uh, helps transform nursing into a true profession with standards and, and accountability. Uh, there's compulsory education in the United States, but not just in the United States all over the world, and especially in Western Europe, this is starting to be a new idea. We're training our youth to work. Um, our, second industrial our second industrial revolution requires our people to be better trained and have a basic skills, including reading and mathematics. Uh, they're also teaching them to do some new white collar types of jobs. Uh, we see increased literacy rates uh, in the United States and around the world, but we also use this in schooling to teach political ideas and promote nationalism. In our case, it's the ideas of democracy and your responsibilities as a citizen. In other cases, it's that idea of uh, rah, rah, us, and boo, whoever else it is. This is going to lead to that extreme nationalism actually down the road that helps, again, promote World War one. There are labor movements in the United States, uh, unions, uh, not just in the United States, but also in Europe. Uh, these are formed to address these unsafe factory work conditions and the fact that they're getting paid very little and the uh, owners of these factories are becoming extraordinarily wealthy. They end up getting better conditions, better pay, shorter hours. Hey, these uh, sound like bad things to the owners who are trying to get maximized profits, but it actually leads to something new called leisure time. And leisure time is a good thing because it actually creates a whole new industry and a whole new add-on to the economy. Uh, the entertainment industry, uh, including uh, radio, movies, uh, vaudeville, uh, plays, all these things are new. Uh, that new additional pay uh, and less hours gives us extra money to buy things and buy the products, and this actually helps grow the economy. Me. Okay, here is a, a Vitascope. Uh, you would go into a Nickelodeon and pay to go into the, the building, an old storefront, and uh, pay a nickel to get in. You could watch these little loops. This is actually an Edison version of this uh, that actually now has some audio on it, so a little bit later on. Okay, this is actually a time period of a lot of new ideas and a lot of change. And so you see this sort of back and forth conservative modernism, uh, back and forth, because whenever there's new ideas, there's always a reaction to them. And let's look at some of those. A light bulb. Thomas Edison gets that before that practical light bulb. Again, other folks experimenting with the same thing. His comes up with this idea of getting this uh, actual working, long-lasting element. 
We saw the unification of Germany. We saw the unification of Italy, uh, 1861 for Italy, 1871 for Germany. And we see, again, new things like radio waves. In this case, this is a Marconi transmitting station for the wireless telegraph. Again, we talk about telegraph. This one's without wires using radio waves, so we call it the wireless telegraph. That will soon become radio, and Marconi will set up the Radio Corporation of America, or RCA. Uh, and this technology allows for things like uh, radio, television, and eventually even that cell phone in your pocket. Okay, if you've been paying attention to these three videos, you should have been able to answer every single question on your study guides, which are due on Tuesday. Now, if you didn't, you can pause me, back me up, go back, fast forward, rewind, find the answers. You also got the book chapters, so good luck. See you on Monday. Arrivederci.